I need to start with something because I'm very happy right now because it's first time in two and a half year, after two and a half years of not being at a conference in person and live. So that kind of feels nice. I hope that's for you the same. I'm happy that my laptop still works, which I haven't used for two and a half years, and the HDMI connector works, and the thingy works, and whatever. So with that out of the way, hi, welcome to PHP Unit 10. Um, I have experience with a lot of things. Most experience that I have is with being Sebastian. So hi, I'm Sebastian. I've been that, doing that for a long time. Started with computers uh, in 1990, doing real-time 2D, 3D graphics effects in assembly language on the Amiga platform. That was a long time ago. Um, started with PHP in 1998, started to work on open source and in the open source ecosystem. Started to meet people working on PHP and other projects in around 1998 as well. Started in, PHP, uh, started in 2000 to work on PHP Unit, and thanks to the pandemic, we didn't get to celebrate the 20th anniversary. We had some nice things to plan for that, but um, maybe at some point we get to that. And in 2009, um, I founded the consulting company together with Arne and Stefan, and that's all that I want to bore you with about my person. Um, why are you here? You are probably here, or hopefully here, because you're interested in the topic of the presentation. And um, the topic, that would be why PHP unit is delayed. This is sort of an apology with an extended explanation about why it is not here yet. Uh, and towards the end, more hopeful things, like why is it worth the wait? What are we working on? What have we been, have we been working on over the last two years? Uh, or over three years now, um, for PHP Unit 10, why it's not that bad that it's not here yet, and why it will be awesome. So, why is PHP Unit 10 delayed? There is um, an obvious answer to that that we will get to in a second. Before, why is it even late? I mean, it's open source, it's ready when it's ready. So, how can something that is only ready when it's ready, um, how can that be late? Well, it can be late if, in a case such as PHP Unit, an open source project says, we have a fixed release schedule so that people can rely on that and know when to expect a new version of PHP Unit. And in PHP Unit's case, that used to be the first Friday of February uh, of every year. So PHP Unit 10 should have been released at the beginning of last year. It didn't, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. So if you look in the past, we do not want to dwell too long on the past. That used to be the schedule. So in the early days, there was no schedule. A release was made when it was ready, and I do not even know for a lot of releases how long those versions were supported. Um, eventually, PHP Unit 3 came along, and that was a very long version series that never really had a deadline for end of life or things like that. And I only really started to care about those things when PHP Unit 4 came along. And PHP Unit 7 is the latest version of PHP Unit that is out of support. We extended the support and more on that in a bit um, for PHP Unit 8 and PHP Unit 9 while everyone, at least we, are waiting for PHP Unit 10 to finally materialize. And when PHP Unit 10 comes along, then we will make a decision how long we will support PHP Unit 8 and PHP Unit 9. Okay, so of course the obvious reason why PHP Unit 10 is late is because there's this very tiny thing that nature threw at us that completely changed our lives. Um, for me personally, it changed quite a lot because I used to exclusively work for my clients, for the teams that I work with on site and in person, and that completely changed. And now I work almost exclusively remotely. So my before the pandemic, when I was home, I was at home. I had spare time, spare time to, walk on open, to work on open source, spare time to, crazier that might sound, not work at some point, because I was home. And I only worked when I was not home, and I worked on open source when I was bored at a hotel, when I was bored on a train, uh, trying to pass the time. 
And that all changed because suddenly I was home all the time, I was working all the time, and I noticed over the course of 2020 that I spent less and less time working on open source because I just didn't have the time to do it, didn't want to work on it at times because I was stressed out, and I did not want to run into a burnout situation. So I said, okay, for now, I cannot work as much as I used to on open source, and things got a lot better um, over the course of last year when uh, like, things settled down and I got more and more used to um, the changed circumstances. But the pandemic is not the only reason why PHP Unit 10 is delayed, because PHP 8 made it necessary to do a lot of work that we never planned on having to do, because in the olden days, when PHP Unit 10 would have come out, support for PHP Unit 8 would have ended, and each PHP Unit version only used to support a very limited set of PHP versions. And with PHP Unit 10 dragging on for so long, there was an increased need to support PHP Unit for the older PHP versions, as well as newer versions of PHP that came out. And PHP 8 made it really necessary to really completely rethink the way that we support PHP versions. And Nikita, at some point um, in, at the end of 2020, when P around the time that PHP 8 came out, tweeted this, like it's really one of the biggest hurdles for teams to upgrade to a new version of PHP, like going from PHP 7 to PHP 8, is that they cannot run the tests for their software for PHP 7 and for PHP 8 with the same PHP unit version because there is no single PHP unit version that supports both PHP versions, and that makes it really hard and that burden should be removed. Uh, around that time, I changed PHP Unit's policy for PHP support uh, going forward. And I want to make it really clear with this, uh, what, what it reads on that tweet, that this is not directed at very sensible and respectful and people that give constructive cri uh, criticism like Nikita. This was directed at, at hundreds of people that were flooding me with tweets and emails saying, uh, you are ruining PHP for everyone, you make it really hard to go to PHP 8, uh, you are not doing enough, you are harming the ecosystem. And you may imagine that that is also not really good for mental health um, and very frustrating to deal with. So, we changed that, it was not fast enough that we acted. Yes, I see that in hindsight, but open source is not always sun and rainbows, especially if somebody floods your HTTP server where you host the far releases of PHP unit with one to two terabytes um, of attack uh, stuff every day. Um, that situation is being dealt with, but it's not always fun to do these things. I talked about in another presentation a while ago about, sorry, that one is in German, but uh, YouTube does a good enough uh, automatic translation with subtitles if you really want to dig into it, about the problems of open source with when it comes to financing and, and so on. That is not the topic of today. So we introduced the concept of life support, and what that means is a P version of PHP unit may no longer get bug fixes, but it may be updated to work with new versions of PHP, making it possible for teams to take the, their existing software that works right now with PHP 7.3 or PHP 7.4 and use the same tests that they have and the same version of PHP unit, which would be PHP unit 8, and run those tests on PHP 8.0, 8.1, and 8.2. Um, and help them really smooth the transition from one version of PHP uh, to the next. Live support means that changes will be made for an otherwise unsupported version of PHP unit to be compatible with new versions of PHP. It ends when an old version of PHP unit cannot be made compatible with a new version of PHP without breaking backwards compatibility. So, at the moment, I do not know what such a backwards compatibility break would look like, but maybe something in PHP 9 will fundamentally change, make it impossible to support PHP Unit 8 on PHP 9. I don't know. 
I hope that does not happen, but eventually things might break. The fact that a version of PHP unit supports a particular PHP version means that that version of PHP unit will work with that version of PHP uh, that is compatible with the PHP version that is required for that PHP unit version. That is a lot to digest. I, and I, 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 uh, to be honest, I know that that is hard to comprehend, but it's the best way of putting it in one, into one sentence that I found so far. So sorry about that. What that means in practice, though, is that PHP Unit 8.5 works for PHP code that is compatible with PHP 7.2 and is still valid PHP 8.1 syntax and works on PHP 8.1. But PHP Unit 8.5 does not know about new features that were introduced in PHP 8.0 or PHP 8.1. And that, is, that should not really be a problem because the use case for this is you have a code base that uses PHP 7.2, you want to upgrade to a newer version, how could you already have new syntax features that were introduced years later in that code base? So that makes um, a lot, at least to me, that makes a lot of sense and should not be that much of a problem. And based on the feedback, that I got from the community, this was a welcome change, and it solves almost all the problems that people had over the years with PHP Unit, only uh, supporting a very restrictive set of PHP versions. PHP 8 is a great release, and it's upgrading to PHP 8 from PHP 7 is a lot less painful than going from PHP 5 to PHP 6, or PHP 7, sorry. Inside joke. Um, but there are some things that changed in PHP 8 that a tool, a framework, a software like PHP Unit has to deal with because it's very low level. -y. So, for instance, union types are great and easy to use, but they are not, you're not going to have a lot of fun with union types if you are testing framework does not know how to stop or mock objects where the methods use union types as for parameter type declarations or return type declarations. So PHP unit needed to learn about union types and intersection types and so on. So for instance, if you, can, if you create a stub for a class and that class has a method that returns a union type, PHP unit needs to know how to create a default return value that is returned when you call that method on the stub and did not configure a return value explicitly. So PHP unit needed to learn about that. It's an edgy edge case, yes, but it happens and it needs to be ca taken care of and it took quite some time to actually make that happen. So all of those things, they work, just took more time um, to do that than, than anticipated. Same um, for the intersection types. You can have um, a function m, a method m that returns a and b, and then PHP unit needs, of course, to generate a class behind the scenes that implements both interfaces. Okay. Never was added as a return type. That needed to be supported. That's rather boring. Um, What's not so boring is that PHP 8 introduced the concept of enumerations, and enumerations behind the scenes are final classes, and final classes cannot be stopped or mocked. What happened when you tried to stop or mock an enum in, uh, in the early days of PHP 8 was you got an error message that nobody could understand. Um, so tiny fix that needed to be made at the right place to give a useful error message. No, you cannot um, test double uh, um, an enumeration. Lots of cleanup, and I hope nobody was affected by this change in PHP 8 other than me. You do not do crazy things with your super global variables, right? So, um, as of PHP 8, it's no longer allowed to say dollar globals equals empty array, because that breaks things. So, that code needed to be amended and rather boring and nobody should ever run into that problem. I ran into it, I solved it for PHP unit, and yeah, you do not want to have those, those problems, don't interact too much with global state. Deprecations were added. Um, yeah, that was interesting. 
um, it was not interesting because of this, but it was interesting because of what this triggered and what that thing triggered, and that was a chain reaction that I do not want to bore you with the details. If you're interested in that, uh, read this article. It's really an interesting problem for very edge casey situations, and afterwards you'll under either understand PHP's compiler better and learn more about it than you ever wanted to know, or maybe you wanted to learn these kinds of details, and that article is probably still too shallow, and you should go and read an article by Nikita on the same subject, but things like that take time, and took time away from what our yeah, what our main goal, what our main objective for PHP Unit 10 was, which brings me to what PHP Unit 10 brings. There are three main new, well, two main feature areas, and one is a feature for those people that work on PHP Unit, which, thank God, is no longer just me, but also people like Arne and Andreas and, and Ewald and others um, that spend a lot of time working on PHP Unit. Uh, so two main new features that you as users of PHP Unit get to see, and a lot of cleanup under the hood to make it easier um, to work on PHP Unit going forward. And the first feature is metadata. So right now in PHP Unit 9, we only have one way of expressing additional information in our test code to communicate with PHP Unit. We can use annotations, which is metadata for code units in comments. We can use doc blocks to put information at a test case class, like in this example, for instance, to say, hey, we intend to cover um, the color class with this test case class, and we consider the tests of this test case class to be small, meaning pure unit tests that only test one unit of code in isolation from everything else. They should be rather fast to execute, um, and so on and so forth. And these annotations, they are rather tricky. Um, if you make a typo, nobody will complain at you. It just it gets ignored because it's not recognized as, some, as something. And there is this great new feature um, that uh, my friend Benjamin implemented for PHP 8, which is called attributes. And attributes is meta, brings us the possibility to express metadata for code units in code. That is real code, and if you make a typo on line 7 or 8, for instance, we get a compile time error because the compiler understands, because this is real syntax, this syntax is evaluated and something happens with it. For instance, lots of checks will be made. Is this a real attribute? Can I use this attribute here? Is this attribute allowed to be used on the class? Is this an attribute allowed to be used on a method? Can I use the same attribute multiple times on the same class or the same method? Or can I use it only once? All that work is being taken away from the developers who, builds, who need to build something like that in PHP code because it now happens in the compiler. That's really great. And I'm happy that, that I can finally do that. Uh, and I'm converting more and more of my projects, where I depend on PHP Unit 10 development version to find bugs, um, to this new syntax, which is, because this is a lot cleaner and more robust than um, the old way of having metadata for code units uh, in comments. And it's really great to see that more and more Libraries and frameworks are picking that up, like Doctrine and Symfony, and move away from metadata in code comments uh, to attributes. Now, the big thing, and which is the reason, one of the reasons why PHP Unit 10 is taking so long, is the event system. And to understand what the event system will be and, and why it will be awesome, we have to look into the past. In the very early days, this is what the so-called test listener interface looked like. This was the only extension mechanism for PHP Unit at the time. Um, and this was at a time where PHP Unit 0 0.3 was the hottest thing, and where PHP 4 was the version of PHP that, that, that we had. PHP 5 was on the horizon, but PHP 4 was, was what we had to deal with. And there were no interfaces. So, this is what an interface looked like in the PHP 4 days. 
If you've never seen that, if you've never had to work with PHP 4, great. Um, I hope I did not ruin your day by showing you that. Um, but this interface surely ruined my days um, over and over and over again because there's a ba very bad idea in there. Well, actually two bad ideas in there. One is the interface is rather large. In, um, interfaces should be narrow, should only have like one method or like only grouped for one specific use case at least. And here you get, yeah, you can, you can call this, or this method is called when the test is started. This is when an error happened. This is when, when a failure happens and so on. And over the years, this grew to close to like 12, 13, 14 methods. So it became worse and worse and worse over the years because of course, when there's one bad thing, bad other bad things pile up over time. That's um, one of the facts about legacy code, I suppose. But the, re the even worse thing in here is that we pass in two possible extensions the actual object that inside PHP unit represents your test. So it is not a listener. It does not just provide you with read-only access to information that comes out of PHP unit, but you can change facts. PHP unit has decided that the test has failed, but the listener can change the flag and say, hey, the test has passed. And you may laugh, but this has happened. Somebody created a couple of years ago the so-called Volkswagen extension for PHP unit. <laughs> which gave you the correct results of your test execution on your local machine, but when you ran the tests on your CI server, it detected the CI server and always told you everything is green. So that was really, really a bad idea. To fast forward a couple of years, uh, PHP Unit 7 came out, and one of the features in PHP Unit 7 was a revamped extension mechanism, which I called the hook interfaces. They were read only, they were separate, but they were not really good, which is why nobody started using them. And we did the mistake inside PHP unit to not use them ourselves immediately when they were created. Otherwise, we would have gotten the feedback ourselves very early on, this is another bad idea. It's better than what we had before, but it's still not what we need. So, a couple of months before this pandemic thing started, Arne, Andreas, Ewald, and I, together with Stefan and some others, were invited by the European Commission to spend a couple of days working on open source and talking about open source. And we discussed this issue of, wouldn't it be nice if PHP Unit finally had a useful mechanism for extensions? And wouldn't events make a lot of sense? And can we please have an event system? And can we have it yesterday? Uh, so we planned, and the plan was, correct me if I'm saying something wrong, Arne, the plan was more or less that within six months or so to be done with the event interface. We planned a couple of code sprints where we would meet in person and work for a couple of days full time on just the event system, but then travel was no longer an option. Um, yes, so that happened. So now everything is an event. This is one of the new command line options that gives you like raw access to the event log and there will be much more useful things that you can do with these events as, as we move along. But this should give you an idea of what events are emitted by PHP unit. So PHP unit starts, it reads the configuration, it loads your autoloader, the bootstrap script. The test suite has been loaded. We know how many tests we are about to execute. We sort the tests, um, the test suite. Maybe you want to run those tests first that failed the last time you ran the tests. Maybe you have configured PHP unit to run the tests first that are fastest. Um, so test suite has been sorted. Then the execution starts. Then an, individual, then an individual test starts at some point. It is first prepared. Then assertions happen. Everything is an event. You make an assertion with assert equals, that's an event that somebody can analyze and give you more information about than the, more, than the standard um, text output from PHP unit. You create a test double, like a stub or a mock, for a specific type with a specific configuration. There's an event for that. So you can build maps of your test suite if you want, and you have to get the information from the 
um, code unit metadata, hey, this test wants to cover that, and it uses that other thing via covers and uses, annotations or attributes. But we also know from events that test doubles are created for this, this, and this, so you get dependency graphs if you want, uh, with very little effort. The point here is everything is an event. And since I prepared that slide, that list of events is no longer complete because the more you work, or the more I work on using events everywhere, which is important, as I get to in a bit, um, I discover, hmm, there's an event missing. This doesn't make sense to use also this event for that because it's a different event, so let's create a new event. Um, so there are events for the test runner, for the command line tool uh, that you use to run your test, like the test runner has started, the test runner has finished, the configuration has been loaded, the configuration has been com combined from the XML configuration file, from your CLI options, from the default configuration, whatever have you. Uh, the extensions for PHP unit were loaded, the execution has finished, and so on. Test suite, I just mentioned that, and then the test was prepared, aborted, or considered risky, it errored, it failed, it passed, it passed with a warning, it finished, all these um, kinds of things, and the most important learning that we put from the test hooks into the event system was that we needed to eat our own dog food, as the saying goes. Once we had the minimal event system working, we started to migrate everything that used to be a listener in PHP unit itself um, to the event system. So for instance, the first thing that I migrated was the piece of code that writes the JUnit XML log file for PHP unit. That used to be a test listener, so the JUnit XML logger would have been able to say, hey, this test did not fail, it passed, because I say so, because the listener was not a listener. So I migrated that to an event, so the JUnit XML logger um, now subscribes um, to a couple of um, events, for instance, to the test prepared event. And then when the test prepared and when, uh, event happens, I can just dispatch to a piece of code that says, okay, this test is about to be executed, we need to know about that. And the code for the JUnit XML logger is now a lot clearer than it used to be. And that will be a theme uh, for the remainder of the presentation. This is what a subscriber looks like. It's, it's rather boring to set up, like you, you know events, you have subscribers, you subscribe to events, you have event handlers, you handle events, you do things. Maybe you write JSON, maybe you write XML, maybe you emit another event because something may, um, may, may make that useful, I don't know. Um, possibilities are almost endless. So where are we at? Process isolation has been migrated to events, so if you run tests in separate processes, the events that happen inside a child process are played, uh, transported back to the parent process, and they are played back. I know that's, that's probably boring, that's in, but it's important internally. Uh, the result cache, um, PHP unit can write a result cache to disk when you run your tests. That is the source of information, for instance, when you want to reorder the tests based on, please run the tests first that failed the last time, run the tests first that are faster than other tests, and so on. We need to write no information about the previous runs, and that used to be a test listener. Now, um, of course, it consumes events. Like I just showed you in code a little bit, the JUnit XML logger has been migrated to events. The Team City logger has been migrated to events. That's important at some, for, for those of you that use PHP unit from within PHP Storm, because the Team City logger is the format that uh, PHP Storm uses to communicate um, with PHP unit. The standard progress printer has, as of like a week ago uh, or so, been ported to events. So the dots, the Fs, the Es, and so on that you see when while your tests are running, those are now events. What I'm currently working on is the result printer. So when something failed, the list at the end, these are the errors, these are the failures, and so on that is currently being worked on. And while working on that, I already found like one or two more events that needed to be implemented. So um, hopefully at some point I stop 
finding new events that need to be implemented. Once I'm done migrating the standard result printer, the next and final step will be the test docs output that needs to be ported to events as well. And what we're currently thinking about is an API for extensions, because so far only PHP unit can emit events that it knows about, and only PHP unit itself can consume events, but we are not doing this just for making our lives easier, but we want to make the lives easier of those developers that build extensions outside of the PHP unit project. For instance, things like PEST or uh, Symphony's PHP unit bridge. So we are currently thinking about and are in contact with our authors uh, and maintainers of popular um, extensions for PHP unit, what they would like um, the API for registering extensions, uh, for instance, to be. But maybe there is not that much for us to do because Nuno Maduro, uh, the maintainer of PEST, already told us that, that he basically migrated PEST um, to the new event system and it just works for him without requiring a specific API that makes things easier for him. So that is um, good news and makes us confident that this is a problem that can be solved in a useful way. And those are, oh, there's a typo. I need to write a test framework for slides, I guess, at some point. So that should be metadata, which is grayed out at the top. Sorry about that. Um, so those are the two major new features, um, improvements that PHP Unit 10 will bring when it eventually comes. Under the hood, a lot has changed because finding the right places to emit the appropriate events has revealed countless previously hidden inconsistencies and prob problems and bugs and all those kinds of things that you would expect from a legacy code base that is going on 22, 23 uh, years right now. For the test runner configured event, we needed a canonical as well as immutable representation of the configuration. Turns out we did not have a representation in code for the configuration. It was scattered all over the place. It was not cohesive. It was horrible. It was a nightmare uh, to work with. Now all of that is gone. The code that loads the XML configuration configuration is better now. The code that processes the CLI arguments is better now. The code that combines those two is better now. There is now even a representation of the default configuration. So what we could do in the future is we have a default configuration and then you have one or more XML configuration files, maybe a project-specific XML configuration file, and a developer-specific local configuration file, and you layer them on top of each other, and then on top of that come the CLI arguments. Yeah, in fact, the configuration only now exists in a meaningful form, and once we had that, we realized that we can rewrite or basically throw away um, the large parts of the CLI test runner and rewrite it from scratch in less and simpler code, and something that grew over 20 years, I was able to rewrite that in maybe a day. Uh, and it's much more understandable now. And not only I understand that now. That, so that's always, also always a plus. If you look at the PHP unit code base right now um, from a very high level, it now finally makes sense, at least if you know what some of these words mean there, and you're used to using PHP unit a bit, because now there are clear areas in the code for everything. You see, ah, there's the framework. That's the stuff that I use when I implement my tests. There's the text UI. That's the part of the code that runs my test on the command line. There's the area for the events and for the metadata and yeah, we still support metadata in annotations, and we will continue to do that in the, into the foreseeable future. So right now, we look for attributes first and then fall back to annotations when there are no attributes. Maybe at some point, we will get rid of the old crafty code um, for dealing with metadata in comments, but at, 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 as of now, there is no concrete plan for that. And that's the area where the events live, it's much clearer now and easier to work with. And I hope that once PHP Unit 10 is finally out, in innovating and implementing new features that makes lives of everyone using PHP Unit a lot easier um, 
will become easier for those that implement those features uh, inside PHP Unit. Yeah, basically, I forgot to click a couple of times. Sorry about that. Um, might have been more useful if you actually saw the, the right pictures. So with that, I'm at the end. I'm looking forward to your questions, both from the, those of you who are here on site and those of you from chat. Um, if I may, I'm, I can help you with your tests, so contact me if you need help uh, testing your software. So with that, thank you. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. Um, with the, the new event stuff in, in place and so on, do you already have made some benchmarks um, if how, how fast it is, if it is faster than previously or slower? That's a good question. Uh, and last week I had a was it last week? Last week I had a, um, a video call with Arne and Andreas. Um, and I was at the beginning very excited and said, yeah, I just did my first benchmark of PHP Unit 9.5 versus PHP Unit 10. And it's really weird because PHP Unit 10 uses less memory than PHP Unit 9. And uh, it's, it's not slower, which is a bit crazy and counterintuitive because a lot more is going on with the events being fired and so on. But then during the video call, I was not able to reproduce the, the, the resource reduction in memory usage. But um, I have not done any proper benchmarks yet. I would not call that um, uh, proper benchmarks that I did last week. Uh, I plan to do that at when we are closer to a release. Right now, I have to say that I do not really worry about the resource usage because it, I, I've been using PHP Unit 10 for a long time now from the development branch, and it certainly does not feel slower. But then feelings, and no. <laughs> we, we are engineers, we cannot really trust feelings, we need hard data, so I plan to do proper profiling at some point. Thanks. I think Arne wants to also add something to that. Yeah, I guess I can add a little bit to that. Um, so, uh, of course, I didn't do any proper benchmarks yet either because it's under really heavy development and we're doing a lot of things technically redundantly right now because there's a lot of stuff still happening for the old way of doing things, so it still works. And the events are additional to that. When p 3 10 is going to be released, all that stuff that we do not need anymore at that point in time is going to be removed, so it's really unfair to actually benchmark it per se, because we are doing more work than we would actually end up doing when it's finally released, so that's really hard to tell. On the other hand, um, if you see how stuff is done right now, if you really look into the core depth of PHP unit, then there's a lot of stuff that we are currently keeping in memory just to be able to actually produce the reports and result things at the end. With the events, you can explicitly decide what kind of information you're going to need so, and can throw away everything else. So. It's rather very likely that it's going to be using a lot less memory than the PHP unit used before, just because all the information that is by then redundant can be thrown away. You can write the log entries by the time you have the event and not just have to accumulate everything and then finally serialize everything. So all overall, it should be at least using a lot less memory in the end. Mm -hmm. And my assumption would be, and again, that's just an assumption, it would be also a lot quicker. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Um, you work on this software for so many years now. Do you still find it interesting to make PHP Inc. Uh, going uh, in uh, new ways, finding new solutions, or maybe it's... The short answer is yes. The slightly longer answer is that every week I work with different teams that use PHP Unit in their daily work. And almost every week I get feedback and questions from people that use it every day and saying, I ran into this issue. Um, it's, it's not a big deal. I can deal with that. But wouldn't it be nice if there were a feature that could make this a little bit easier? And that is most of the input that I use to think about 
ways of making the writing of tests easier, making the execution of tests easier, getting more useful information out of running your tests. So yes, I'm still interested in that. I'm still interested in making it better because it makes maybe not the lives, but the work of people uh, working on software easier and better. OK, thank you. So is there a question left? OK, then I will check the chat, because I think we have several questions here. OK, um, Michael wants to tell you, no question, but a big thank you to Sebastian for PHP unit. And uh, you also received a lot of good feedback, like, uh, hell yeah. And, <laughs> and <laughs> huge thanks to Sebastian. And uh, thumbs up. And the first question is from Victor. How big is the bus factor for a PHP unit? This question is not meant as Sebastian is not doing enough, but more as are there enough contributors and maintainers? That's a good question. I would say right now it's larger than one. <laughs> so we are closely working towards like three or four. So if I ever run over by a bus today, I'm pretty confident, well, I would be dead, but <laughs> right now, like temporal anom anomalies. If, if you're interested in temporality things, come to Stefan's talk this afternoon, spoiler. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that Arne and Andreas and others would be able to take over. All right, thank you. And I'm... I'm uh, I am using a feature on GitHub that not a lot of people know about. So you can tell GitHub like what happens with my GitHub account and all my stuff when I die. So, so I have set that up. So all every, every, somebody needs to do is tell GitHub with a death certificate that I am no longer living. And then somebody um, would get all the credentials and not only would the, is the bus factor taken care of, but this succession thing would be solved on a technical level. Okay, there's another question. Is there a performance benefit in putting attributes like hashtag small? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that, yeah, um, yes, so if you tell PHP unit like this is a small test, this is a pure unit test, or um, and this is not expected to leave the scope outside, uh, of the PHP runtime, this is not supposed to touch the file system, for instance, then PHP unit can enforce that. And if, if you're running code that uses fopen or MySQL connect or whatever to do network or IO uh, file system operations, will be flagged by PHP unit, hey, you're doing something that you told me you do not want to happen while this test is running. So it um, can tell you, hey, this breaks with assumptions. Same goes for time limits. A small test is supposed to run within milliseconds. If it takes longer than that, it's marked as risky. And you get a deeper shade of green in your code coverage HTML report when something is covered by a small test. There's also medium and large. Um, for for end-to-end -end tests, you would use um, large, and then probably you do not want to get code coverage anyway, and are allowed to do more things, and medium is somewhere in between. OK, so Osman wants to tell you, in my opinion, you don't even need to apologize for delaying PHP unit. People should be thankful you are putting time into updating and improving, improving PHP unit. You are giving it out for free. And you guys prevent a lot of headaches and stress for a lot of people. Thank you for that as well. And next question is from Michael. What are my options to support help donate Sebastian? <laughs> Um, you can you can contrib contribute. The easiest way to contribute to PHP Unit probably is to write tests. PHP Unit is tested with PHP Unit, but not everything is tested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you can, could could start with that. You can contribute to the documentation. You can look at the issue tracker, find bugs, try to find your way into fixing those bugs. 
if you cannot do that or do not want to do that or do not have the time to do that, you can um, support the development of PHP Unit financially, either as a company or as an individual. Um, for the latter, the, the preferred way is GitHub sponsors. And for corporations, there is information on phpunit.de that usually comes, yeah, that's, that's usually how it goes. All right, thank you. So the next question is, what is the philosophy behind everything, behind everything event? What benefits can devs tester can get out of it? So what's the benefit behind uh, everything is an event? Um, there is no real tangible benefit to the regular user, the regular developers who uses PHP Unit to write and run their tests. It's First and foremost, something that makes the lives of people working on PHP Unit easier. And immediately after that, it will make the lives of those people easier that write extensions and customizations for PHP Unit. But uh, maybe somebody comes up with, with a clever way of also using events inside tests for very specific things. I don't know. I, I wouldn't know anything off the top of my head where, where um, that would be useful, but surprise me. Okay, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm not gonna try to take over Sebastian's talk here, but no, no. Um, since I'm kind of core part of like all this event stuff, um, maybe that's a nice hint. I think we have a, one issue that actually was used for tracking all the progress on like how the event system works. And I think the developers from PEST, if I remember correctly, yeah already gave it a test run and they were like really happy with that because it allowed them to make use of all the events without actually overwriting anything, extending anything, they just used what we provide. And that's exactly the idea of the event system, to make it possible for not the average developer who's using PHP Unit as an end user kind of way, but for a developer that's extending PHP Unit, writing extensions to it itself, creating wrappers around it, whatnot, to make more of it do things that we didn't even consider or that we don't think is what the main um, line of PHP Unit should be doing. So there's a lot of additional gain for like everybody else extending and working with PHP Unit in that way. Okay, thank you very much. We have two questions left. Um, from Hugo, thanks for the presentation. Will all annotations be migrated to attributes, for example, at data provider, etc.? All annotations that are supported in PHP Unit 9 have been migrated to attributes. Caveat, some annotations I decided do not make sense anymore, so I did not port them. And since um, the attribute system came into, came into existence, more metadata has been added, and that has only been added as an attribute so far. I'm reluctant to also implement it as an annotation because that kind of would feel like enabling people to longer work with uh, annotations, and they shouldn't. All right, so we have a last question. Will the release schedule get back to yearly major releases, or will you rethink this? It will prob... It, yes, there will be thinking involved, <laughs> but I'm leaning towards uh, returning to the annual release cycle. All right. Then we made it so far. I'll just I'll come in. So thank you very much for the presentation. I enjoyed it. I hope you all do. Me. But it sounds like you did. And yeah, we'll see you in the next session. And huge thank you again for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.